Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread, and I'd love to, again, see what you're up to, and I'll try and answer your questions as we get going, but let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real-world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. One last thing I was going to mention too, because I don't know how much time I'm going to need to turn all this on. Maybe it's ready to go and, you know, the real me, the live me can just, just cut this off and we can get to it. But in case I need a little bit more time, let me just tell you about myself. So my name is Derek Mitchell. We've been over that. Also, uh, I live in Montana, in Kalispell, Montana, actually, which is just outside of Glacier National Park. And I've got four daughters and a wife, and we have tons of fun doing outdoor things like riding bicycles. We float the river on our paddle boards. That's a ton of fun. I love to downhill mountain bike. That's a ton of fun. When it snows for like nine months out of the year, I like to go snowboarding and skiing. So uh, I feel like I'm rambling. So at any point, Derek, just go ahead and just you know, let's do this, let's get live, let's start teaching. What is going on, Miles? My dog just came to say hello. Hi, Miles. Let's say hello to the people, come here. Come here, come say hi. This is Miles, my poodle. We're working on his mohawk. Oh, thanks. Kisses.
Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real-world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. All right, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the stream tonight. It's gonna to be a ton of fun. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, see so we got a lot of people in the chat tonight from Texas all the way to the UAE. Uh, lots of fun stuff happening tonight. So what we're gonna do, I've actually got some work to do, some real work, some client work, and I'm gonna let you look over my shoulder and we're gonna make some stickers. So should be a lot of fun. I might even make some coasters. We'll see, we'll see how far we make it tonight. <clears throat> but if you're just tuning in, uh, say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from, what you're up to. My name is Derek Mitchell. I'm a graphic designer and a creative director. I live in Kalispell, Montana, near Glacier National Park. And uh, my day job is to stream for Adobe and I create stuff. I'm a graphic designer uh, also for a company here. Um, I have an office in town, but I also uh, work for a company that is out of state. That was a weird intro. I'm sorry, it's late. Um, <laughs> basically, I do a lot of things. I live stream, uh, I do graphic design, I do web development, and a lot of fun things. So this project is actually for one of our, our clients, and uh, we're gonna make some stickers. So I'll show you the process. I use a company called Sticker Mule. Let's see here. There we go. So here's Sticker Mule, stickermule.com. I actually love these guys. They make really high quality stickers and they do a great job. So if you get a chance, check them out. They're always offering uh, promotions and stuff. So if you go to their homepage at stickermule.com, let's see here. Also, how's the sound? How's the music? At Mule, the music just died, but the music and the microphone, let me know if it's loud enough, if it sounds good. Uh, anyway, when you first log in, you'll see down here that you can get different promotions. So right now they're doing these holographic stickers you can get 50 of them for only $29, normally 80 bucks. So check that out. I actually just bought some of these today. They're super cool stickers. I have one, uh, I can't show you right now, it's over off the side, but 
anyway, really, really, really cool stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set up your files and how to make some cool stickers. Also, it's been about three weeks since I went live. I'm feeling a little rusty tonight. So uh, hopefully we can use this stream as a way to warm up a little bit. All right, cool. So what I wanna do, I gotta make a couple adjustments here. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna make. All right, let's turn this down. Here are the coasters. Sticker Mule makes it fast and easy to order custom coasters. Whether you want to use them for your restaurant, company, or event, our custom coasters will look great under any drape. We use a premium material that's designed to handle spills, and each coaster can be printed in full color. Ordering is easy. Simply choose a quantity, upload your artwork, and check out. Within a few hours, we'll send you an online proof showing how your coasters will look once they're printed. You can request changes to the proof for free until you're happy. With easy ordering and fast delivery, Sticker Mule is the internet's favorite place to get custom coasters. All right, so there's the coasters. Uh, and I should point out that I'm not an affiliate. At least that I know. Sticker Mule makes whoop, it fast whoop, and whoop, easy whoop. to order. There we go. At least that I know of. I could probably share a link or something and you guys could get a discount or something. But um, I just genuinely love these these stickers and this product. So that's why I'm referring them. Um, let's see, what was I gonna show you? Okay, these are insane. These holographic stickers are so cool and I wish I would have planned ahead. I have one, it's on my guitar case over here but it's buried under a bunch of stuff. Anyway, check out these, these are so cool. Let's make it full size, all right. <clears throat> Introducing custom holograph uh oh uh oh why is the system audio muted let's try that again from the top introducing custom holographic stickers from sticker mule we use a holographic material to give your stickers a colorful shine Every sticker is printed in full color and can be cut to any shape. To order, select a size and quantity, upload your artwork, then check out. Within a few hours, we'll send you an online proof. You can request changes to your proof for free until you're happy. With easy ordering and fast delivery, Sticker Mule is the internet's favorite place to get custom holographic stickers. Awesome. Oh, I love it. All right. <clears throat> so those are the holographic stickers. Very cool stuff. Um, oh, I'm pushing all kinds of wrong buttons here. Nope. I don't want to play it again. Wow, custom. guys. I am rusty tonight on the stream. Holographic. There we go. Okay. So those are the holographic stickers. Very, very cool. I highly recommend them. And then the regular stickers. There's all kinds of great stickers here. We've got die cut stickers, circle stickers, on and on and on, all kinds of great stuff. Today I ordered die cut stickers. I ordered some of these clear stickers, some holographic stickers. I'm stoked to uh, see them. I should be getting them next week. Um, and I'll show you guys how they turned out. Here is a, here's the sticker. These promo are custom video. stickers. Can I make it bigger? And with Sticker Mule, ordering custom stickers like these is fast and easy. But first, let's figure out what kind of sticker is right for you. Die cut stickers are the most popular choice. The vinyl die cut fits the shape of your design. All you have to do is upload your artwork and we'll give you a proof that shows you how we plan on cutting the sticker. Die cut stickers are also available in familiar shapes, including circles, rectangles, squares, ovals, and rounded corner stickers. Kiss Cut stickers use the same material as die cut stickers, but include a paper backing around the sticker that makes it easy to peel and helps protect your sticker. The backing can be left blank or have its own design. Clear stickers are printed on a transparent vinyl that makes your design see-through in places, like the gaps between letters. If you're looking to customize hundreds or thousands of products and packaging, our custom roll labels will make it easy to peel and place your labels with speed. Lastly, we have transfer stickers. 
These are perfect for complex designs that include multiple individual pieces that need to stay in the right position when you transfer them to your desired surface. All of our stickers have a strong adhesive and a protective laminate with a matte finish that protects your stickers from wind, rain, scratching, and sunlight. After you get your proof, you can request changes for free and even switch your sticker type if you change your mind. All right, that is Sticker Mule. So that's who we're using for these stickers tonight. So these let's, are custom let's stickers. Dive in. I know those are amazing custom stickers. Okay, uh, so a lot of places we could start. Um, because oh man, okay. First of all, before I get too much further down the road, I want to point out there's probably about a twenty to thirty second leg leg lag. <laughs> between uh, live and when you guys actually see this. So if you're in the comments, can you let me know at the very least, is the audio synced up? Does it sound okay? Um, I've been having a few issues with the live stream. <clears throat> I've dialed in a few of the settings. Hopefully it's, it's better tonight. Uh, as I go longer on the streams, it tends to drift a little bit further. So I'm hoping to get that fixed. But in the meantime... It is what it is. So let me know if we're in good shape and I'll keep going. The audio seems okay over on Facebook. Thank you so much, Lada, for joining in for the comments. I see you. I appreciate you. All right, let's let's keep going then. Uh, so I'm I'm mostly checking the comments. I see them on Behance.net. <clears throat> if you go to creativebrief.live, it'll redirect to my page on Behance or Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. Uh, I'm on Facebook tonight. I'm also on YouTube. So if you're having issues with the stream, there's a chance that YouTube might be playing it a little more stable. Uh, that's over at youtube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And uh, yeah, that should be it. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm, I'm not really sure where I want to start. Uh, kind of warming up, feeling a little bit rusty right now. I also want to do some buttons too. I didn't even get into that. Do you guys want to watch the promo video for buttons? We could do that. The buttons are super sweet. Maybe we'll do a button real quick. Here's the buttons. We gotta watch the video. These videos are so Sticker good. Sticker Mule makes it fast and easy to order custom round buttons. Our custom buttons are great for promoting your business, fundraising for a cause, or supporting your favorite political candidate. Each button features a smooth, weather-resistant finish with a durable steel pin back. Ordering custom buttons couldn't be easier. Simply choose what type of button you want. Select the quantity, upload your artwork, and breeze through checkout. Within a few hours, we'll send you an online proof showing how we intend to make your buttons. You can request changes to the proof for free until you're happy. With easy ordering and fast delivery, Sticker Mule is the internet's favorite place to get custom round buttons. All right, hey, what's up, Lada? Over on YouTube now, moved over. How is the stream doing over there? Is it any better? Um, yeah, just a kind of experimenting with some of my settings and stuff. So those are the buttons. We also have some acrylic buttons. So if I come back here to the buttons tab and I come down here to the, or I'm sorry, the pins, the custom pins, uh, those are super cool too. So once I, once I show you guys how, how to do all this, uh, you'll be able to basically take the same, the same approach and make any of these, whether it's a sticker or a button or even packaging, all kinds of cool stuff over here at stickermule.com. Again, I'm not an affiliate. I don't make any money referring them to you. I just really like their stickers and this is who I use when I print stuff. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. All right, <clears throat> so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a button because I already have an idea. It's gonna be fast just to kind of warm up. So I'm gonna jump into, I'm gonna do a one inch round button How's the music? It's pretty loud in my ears, but I think in the stream it's a little softer. So let me know if it's too loud. All right, so I'm gonna order some buttons here. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's this link here for templates. If I click on that, I can choose what template I'm looking for. I'll click on buttons. I'm gonna do the one inch round template here. I'll just click download all sizes. goes to my download stack, which is behind my head. You can't see it. There it is. 
I'm just gonna click on it to expand that folder. We'll open it up and let's jump into, okay, so this is good to point out. So we have both a, well, we have a few different file types. We've got an Illustrator file, which is .ai. We have a .eps, which is basically, it's a universal vector file. So if you're not using Illustrator, but you're using a vector design software, this EPS file might work really well for you. We have a PDF, and it's a, it's a very, very basic file, you can see. And then we got the PSD. So if you wanted to jump into Photoshop, uh, I know we're, we're primarily working in Illustrator tonight, but let's go ahead and just see what this looks like in Photoshop. You could just as easily design in this template. We've got our artwork layer, which is, again is behind my big head here. There we go. Um, we've got the artwork layer. So that's where you'd put your artwork when you're ready to design this. And then we have the main template overlay area. What is this? What is this telling me here? It's difficult to see. So let's jump into this artwork layer. Let's just fill it with a color just to kind of see what we're doing here. Huh? Interesting. Place text in this area and it will print on the rim of your button. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so if I wanted text to kind of go around the edge of the button, so this must be where it starts to curve from this line towards the end, because the button has some depth to it, right? <clears throat> so, um, interesting. All right, good to know. So if you're comfortable in Photoshop, you could design your button in here and send it to print. I think for the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna jump into Illustrator because I already have a file uh, this is the file I'll be working with, the brand. I'm going to be using this icon for the button here. That'd be cool. All right, let's jump into that folder, my download stack again. Let's open up the Illustrator file and see how it looks in Illustrator for that template. All right, continue. All right, so we have the one inch button template. And if you're in Illustrator and your, your screen doesn't look quite like mine. Go ahead and come up here to, uh, we've got this little, what would you call it, a thumbnail? No, icon, oh my gosh, guys. Uh, and this is all the different workspaces, which if I click on these, it resets all the different windows and panels to be the best for that, that type of thing you're doing, whether it's painting or typography, uh, whatever you're gonna be doing in Illustrator, it will reset your workspace. You can also come up here to window down to workspace and choose it from here as well. So I'm gonna to go to Essentials Classic because that's what I'm used to. That's what I prefer when I'm working for the most part. And uh, and this still isn't exactly like Essentials Classic. If I come down to Window, Workspace, and then Reset Essentials Classic, it'll put all the windows back kind of how they are. Um, uh, was this icon given to me by my client? So this brand, um, Okay, I've got two brands I'm working on. This Third Bowl and Co. This is one we're working on. This is a logo that I did. Um, this T3B and uh, all of this layout. <clears throat> this is a logo that I did. The Armasite logo is one that uh, was somebody else had done, but I kind of cleaned some things up and kind of refined a little bit as far as the brand guidelines go. So um, not an original design that I did. I'm just taking the brand and running with it. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so we got the button template. First thing I'm gonna do is save it. So I'll go to File, Save As, and this will be the Armasite one inch button here. So uh, let's go to that brand. Let's make a new folder for buttons. I'm just gonna save it right in here. This isn't going to be a template site one. All right, so the one I'll leave in there as the size. This is gonna be the icon, not the full logo. <clears throat> we'll save it. Boom, okay. So now let's jump back over here to this logo that has all the assets for me. And there's a couple different, there's basically, two, I'm either gonna go white or black with this. So uh, let's see. If this were on a backpack, it's most likely gonna be like a tactical backpack. 
It's probably gonna be green, like olive drab green, OD green, black, or tan. So that being said, do I want, oh man. I'm kind of feeling like maybe the white one would stand off better. I like this, okay. Also, we're gonna lose the trademark icon on this because we're just gonna do a button. We'll copy that. Come back over here to my template. All right, let's see. So place text in this area and it will print on the rim. So I'm assuming the safe area is going to be within this circle. So let's jump over to my layers and see what other guides it has. You like the white one too? Awesome, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Uriel over on Behance, music is good on the background level. Thank you. All right. So let's see, uh, I've got my different layers. So we've got the cut line. So this line is where the artwork totally gets cut off. Okay. So this is where, you know, anything past this totally gets chopped off. We've got our tick mark and I'm not really sure why that's there or what it's supposed to do. I don't know if it's like the center. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's for them when they put the pin on the actual pin part, right? Where the pokey is, it probably helps them orient it so it's vertical or center. Also, you may or may not have noticed, but my camera is sitting on my desk and my desk is wobbly. Oh my gosh, I gotta fix that for the next stream. Oh well, okay. Um, the template, okay, that's the template. Here's where the artwork will go and the instructions. All right, <clears throat> let's see. The other thing we could play around with is this stop looking, start seeing tagline that they have. Maybe we could bend that around the edge. That might be cool. That might be cool. All right, let's start with the basics. We're gonna go on our artwork layer. Real quick, a couple little techniques that uh, I didn't know for years using Illustrator. Um, so, when I'm an illustrator, I rarely use layers. I pretty much smash everything on one layer because it's all vector and you can rearrange the stack pretty easily. When you're in Photoshop, I make a million layers. So one thing that I discovered, let's say you have a bunch of shapes on here and um, why are those not showing the strokes? Oh, okay. It's because they're behind this front template, which has, it must have, um, okay, good to know. If I move these over in front, you can see them. So this front template area, if I turn off the lock in these layers, you can see that they put like a, a white box over the top of your artwork. So if it, if it goes past, you can see how it's gonna look. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, anyway, but let's say you wanna select all these at the same time. On this layer, if you come over here to the side, there's this little circle icon. And if you click it, it'll highlight or select everything on that layer which is pretty cool. And uh, I'll show you more how I use this, but anyway, uh, it's a great little shortcut if you're trying to move artwork around from different things. You can lock the layers, for example, the cut line, the tick mark, the template. I'm gonna lock all of this. And then that way I know that when I'm designing, let's go ahead and delete all these squares I threw in here. I'm only gonna be in this artwork layer and that way I know when they go to send the comp back to me, nothing's gonna be, uh, What's the word? But they're gonna turn off all these extra layers. They're only gonna show me the artwork layer. All right, let's get going. Let's go ahead and grab this logo, which I think I already have my pasted. Yep, I do. Okay, so I already copied it onto my clipboard here. I'm gonna throw this in here. And I think, let's see. Let's see how centered this document is. It's very centered, okay. Nope. So I centered it vertically. No, yes, vertically, horizontally, vertically. Oh my gosh, you guys. Anyway, now what I have to do is make it centered here. And a couple ways to work. One is to make sure in your view that you have your smart guides turned on. Because as you move things around, it'll kind of snap in place. Okay. The next thing I want to do is everything's locked. I'm going to come back over to my cut line and I'm going to unlock that. And this is where this trick comes in handy. I can either click on that cut line or if I'm having a difficult time selecting it because it's so small, I can click over here on this little circle to select that layer, that trim line. 
Okay, just zooming out to make sure that's the only thing I've got selected. Then I'm gonna shift click the artwork and then I'm gonna let go of everything on the keyboard in my hand and the mouse. I'm gonna come back over here and click one more time on this cut line. And it's really, really difficult, almost impossible to see, but it made that line a little bit thicker. And that tells me when I go to a line up here in the options bar, you can see all these alignment options if you've got the move tool selected. If you don't see that, come over here to window, come down to align, and then you have this align panel. And what we wanna do is we wanna make it centered horizontally and then centered vertically. Okay, and that screwed everything up. Let's undo that because it's trying to align to the artboard, okay? But I wanna align it to this key object and I'm having a hard time selecting it because it's so tiny. This might cause problems here. I'll say key object. Let's see if it works. This might be a terrible example. It is, it's a bad example. Okay, um, I'm not sure why I'm having a hard time selecting this as the key object. Something's weird going on. And that always happens, I feel like, when I'm working in somebody else's file. So let's try unlocking these other layers too. Let's grab this little path, shift click the artwork, come back over here and click once on that path. Okay, see that, it worked. Notice how it got thicker. That's telling me whatever I do in my alignment panel, this thicker selection is gonna stay put and the rest of my selections are going to align to that. So if I go horizontal, vertical, there. Now I can see that this is perfectly centered just how I want it to be. All right, <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do, I gotta figure out how I want this to translate. If I want this stroke to kind of bend over the edges or be right on top centered. And I think I want it to be right on top centered. So I'm gonna grab this. How's the music guys? Is it getting too loud? Let me know. I'm going to scale this in just a little bit. Okay. Then on the same artwork layer, I'm going to make another circle. And actually on this template, it, it really doesn't even matter. I can make a huge rectangle, huge rectangle. Let's go ahead and make this black. And I like to use a rich black. So I use a 60% cyan. 40% magenta, 40% yellow, and 100% black. And that's gonna make your black really, really saturated because when it prints, it's gonna print a little bit of each color on top of itself. If you just print 100% black, so let's set these all to zero, except for black, and I click okay. Depending on the screen you're looking at, you might not see a difference at all, but I can see that it's, it feels a little more gray versus like a really true rich black. All right, let's open that back up. 60% cyan, 60% magenta, no, 40% magenta, 40% yellow. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you just make them all 100%? Why don't you just make everything 100% across the board? Well, what's gonna happen is your ink is never gonna dry and you're gonna get what's called like lift off. So if, if your ink doesn't dry and it touches another page, it's gonna stick to that page and then it's gonna lift off the other page and it's gonna make a mess. So check with your printer. Um, I forget exactly, what is this? If you were to add these up, 60 plus 40 would be 100, 200, 240 would be if you added these all together. Did I math that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and most printers have a threshold of how much saturation you can have before it's a problem. So double check with your printers. Um, they'll usually let you know. But anyway, just something that I figured out over time in doing this. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so now I've got a rich black. Currently, it's just a rectangle. You can see my shape just behind here because it doesn't really matter because of the way the template is built. And uh, currently, this is in front of the other work. So I can hit Command and the left bracket key. It's right next to the letter P to just quickly send it behind is what I would do. Just to show you what I'm doing here, let me show you where that's at. Oh my goodness, beach ball. Uh-oh, arrange. So under object, down to arrange, I want to send this rectangle backwards. Send backwards, so command in that left bracket. We'll send it back, let's do that again a couple more times. Why do I have everything selected? What's going on?
There we go. Okay, so we've got this black rectangle behind this logo. And what's gonna happen, I think, is this outer stroke is gonna fall just short of where the curve of the button starts. That's my hope. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's all I want for this button. Super basic, super, super basic. So I'll go ahead and save this. But maybe we we'll wanna try another version that's got like the web address wrapped around this or something. So let's hit, uh, let's go to file, save as. And let's just call this button with URL or something, or maybe with tagline. I don't know. We're gonna make this up as we go. <clears throat> All right. So now we're gonna do is I wanna add some text around the edges. So if I look at this template again, I'm gonna turn my artwork layer off and we can see that place text in this area and it will print on the rim of your button. That sounds super cool. Let's see what we can do with that. All right, save it. I already saved it, but save it again. Why not? Armasite logo, stop looking, start seeing. I'm just gonna grab this whole thing. Let's see how this plays. Um, I'm gonna paste it in here. It's still selected. I'm gonna come here to effect, down to warp. And we're gonna try, I can't remember if it's arc or arch. It doesn't matter, cause we can change it later. We'll try arch. I'm gonna click preview. Where'd it go? Okay, so it went way off the canvas here. So let's cancel that. Let's kind of scrub this down to be about the right size. I'm gonna make it much smaller. And and if this were text, I could do like the text on the path and make it actually, actually I could do that anyway, because I know what the font is. But right now we're just gonna, let's just keep going. Let's just see what we can do here. I'm gonna center this. So I have a better chance of it wrapping the way I want to. Effect, warp, arc. I'm just gonna click okay. Let's just see what happens. Oh, that looks terrible. Okay, um, but I'm gonna come over here to the appearance panel. I always click on the wrong one. There it is. Okay, we've got the warp. And what I can do in the appearance panel, if you don't see this, come up here to window and go down to appearance. And this is an effect being applied. You can see the shape of the vector asset is unchanged, but it it's applying an effect to it. So let's go ahead and click on this warp arc. Let's change this to, instead of an arch, let's make it an arc. And you can see, okay, exactly. So before this arch, see how it kind of skewed the text to be all vertical? Uh, we want this to be an arc, so it kind of wraps around. And I don't know, I don't know how, how much of a bend we want to put on this thing. There's probably some kind of a formula I don't know, I'm just making this up as we go. So what I'm looking at is this edge here on the right and this edge on the left. How they're just barely kind of kissing the edge here and then I want that to be the same at the top. So I'm gonna highlight this in my up arrow key to kind of nudge it 1% one, 1 at a time. That looks pretty close, I'll click okay. And then I'm just gonna hit my down arrow key to kind of move this into center and it doesn't quite look right yet. So now what I'm gonna try um, visually, this kind of looks centered. It's pretty close. It's not great, but it's close. I'm gonna open this back up again. This is highlighted. Let's use my up arrow key to kind of push this up further. Click okay. Kind of nudge it in place a little bit. So obviously doing it this way is a lot of trial and error. Um, yeah, there's there are better ways to work, but we're just kind of experimenting and seeing what's gonna how it's gonna work out here. And I'm totally eyeballing this. Like it's not I like to do things as perfect as possible, so when I have to eyeball stuff like this, it drives me nuts. If I had to measure, excuse me, if I had to measure this and make sure it was perfect, what I would probably do is hit the letter M to get my rectangle tool. I'd change the color to something bright just so I can see it. 
against everything else. Whoops, that's still selected. Let's unselect that. Why did it do that? Oh my goodness. Which layer am I on? Artwork. Okay, one more time. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. Change the color to that bright color. Here's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Why is it doing that? I must be in grayscale or something. CMYK. File. Document color mode. CMYK. Document setup. Interesting. I have no idea why it's changing my colors. Something weird is going on. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to leave it alone. Anyway, what I was going to show you is I would take a shape and I would literally use the size of that shape to measure the distance between two different pieces to see if it was centered. That's all. That's all I was trying to show you. Okay. Um, that is okay. It's all right. Hmm. So it definitely needs some more something. Let's put the web address. And I'm pretty sure that font is industry. So let's go grab the website real quick. So text, we're on the artwork layer. I'm going to click in here. Actually, what I need to do is make a shape. Interesting. So the color works on this layer, but not the other one. I have no idea. What is happening there? All right, so there's a circle. So now I can make sure the text below is gonna be on the exact same line. Shift X just to make it a stroke. All right, this is gonna be my guide for the text. So let's grab my text tool and let's get the type on a path tool. I'm just gonna click in the centerish here and let's just add some text, some text. Let's make it white. Okay, now we need to flip it. Oh, and I don't remember, there it is. So there's this little, depending on where you click, you can change where the text starts by grabbing these handles here. I can control where it ends by dragging this end over here, or I can grab this center part and I can pull it down to kind of flip it. All right, so lots going on here. Let's center that. I clicked up here in the options bar in the center area. Oh, um, what's the name of the app you used to get the hex code CMYK and Pantone of a color? Uriel over on Behance. Um, so I love to use an app called SIP. Uh, and it's up here in my options bar. It's not what I just used for color. I actually just used what's built into Illustrator, but this, it looks like this. And let me do that again, because my, all right, right there, SIP, S-I-P. If you search for SIP, I think it's, I think you have to pay for it, but I, I use it every day. I love it. What I love about it is I can sample a color from literally anywhere on my screen. And I know you can do that in Photoshop too, um, but I don't always have Photoshop open, but I'm always sampling color for things. So I love that I can just sample a color. And then as soon as I do, it copies that hex code to my clipboard. It gives me the name of it. There's a lot of other cool things you can do with this program. So SIP is the name of that. <clears throat> And then, uh, but tonight I just double clicked over here in the thumbnail to grab the color picker inside of Illustrator. 
All right, let's get this text in place. I do not use this type on path tool nearly enough. So I'm super rusty with it, but I hope, uh, I don't mind being rusty or what's the right word? Uh, not good in front of you guys when I'm live. And the reason why is because I feel like, I feel like when I record my tutorials, they come across super polished, right? And sometimes that can be intimidating. By the way, shameless plug, if you're just tuning in, uh, and you've not seen my stuff, go to DerekMitchell.com and I've got some, uh, some free tutorials you can check out here on the tutorials link. Uh, but I also have some courses. The best way to stream my courses currently is to go to Skillshare. Uh, go to Skillshare.com and I've got a few there. Uh, however, I also have, if you go to courses here on my website, I've got this um, all access vault. I think it's like a dollar for the first 30 days and then 12 bucks a month after that. And it's every course that I've ever done plus direct access to me in Slack and a few other cool things. So check that out if you want to. Um, but yeah, the thing about tutorials like that, I feel like they're so hyper polished that you feel like, oh my gosh, uh, I'll never be that good. And I, how does how does he know all those things? Well, it's because I can edit the video. When you're live, <laughs> sometimes you forget things and that's okay. So anyway, hopefully that encourages you guys just to get started if you're feeling overwhelmed. Right now I'm struggling to make this text do what I want it to. Um, but we'll get there. It's just jumping around. Part of it's my, my computer is a little choppy right now. Oh my goodness. I might have to, I might have to do this later when I'm not streaming. It just does not want to work for me right now. Uh, let's see. Some text. All right, let's center that. Let's rotate it. So I hit the letter R on my keyboard to get the rotate tool. And then I just clicked off canvas and just kind of rotated. That's how I did that, in case you're wondering. Because I gave up trying to make the type tool do it right. <laughs> uh, okay, if so, question over on YouTube. Lana, if we were to experiment with the stickers, what would your advice what would, what would you advise us to use create your own logo oh got it okay if you're going to make a logo or if you're going to play around with stickers yeah um good question okay so stickers what's cool about sticker mule uh, that i didn't even really talk about is the fact that you can order depending on what you're gonna do it's still like this one um these are custom coasters super cool I can get as few as 50 of them. It's still over a dollar a coaster. That's pretty expensive, especially when I was first starting out in college and I had less than no money. I owed people money. Um, that might be difficult to do. If your client's paying for it, then it doesn't really matter. You just add it to the invoice. Um, but when you jump over here into stickers, let's just do like a simple circle sticker. Uh, that's still a dollar a sticker. I thought I saw one that was like fairly cheap. Anyway, um, I realized depending on your budget, this could be expensive. Um, but what is cool about it is you can get as few as 50, right? You don't have to buy 5,000 stickers for $300, right? You can do just a short run to see if you like them. So uh, as far as, as far as what I would, advise for you to experiment with um gosh what could you do what could you do we could do you could do your name and put your sticker on all your stuff especially if you have roommates um you could do for me i should make this because i share an office with a bunch of guys if you're watching austin and paul i'm gonna have to make my own stickers to put on all my gear because you guys keep stealing my gear um <laughs> but you could do that. You could jump over and use, um, oh gosh. I love Envato Elements. This I am an affiliate for, but um, I don't have a link posted. Or maybe I do, whatever. Use a link if I if I posted a link that helps me out. If not, check it out anyway. Um, and you could search for, there's all kinds of items from music to graphic templates and whatever. Um, you could search for, uh, 
I don't know, icons and find some icon that you think is cool. Oh, okay. Here's, here's the lo-fi way to do this. Um, hold on. Let me finish this thought real quick. So you, you could maybe grab something in here <clears throat> from Envato Elements. If you're an Adobe uh, Creative Cloud member, you can go to stock.adobe.com and there's Adobe stock. So depending on what your subscription level is, I have a bunch of licenses with this. So you could find, you know, icon. Oh my gosh, I can't type icons in Adobe stock and maybe find something. These are not the icons I was looking for. How about logo? Oh, it's because I'm under the 3d tab. There we go. You could find something in here. If you just wanted to try something out, like check this out, you could make a super cool button with this artwork. Play around with that. License it real quick. It's a vector file. You could change some of these assets or some of these uh, elements here and, and there you go. I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. I hope that inspires you. Um, yeah, let's keep going. All right, so this is industry. I don't even know, nope. So anytime I type out a URL for a client, I always copy that URL, jump over to the website, paste it and make sure that their website loads. Okay, cool. Good. That's the right address. So that's good. Um, this is all lowercase. This is all uppercase. So let's highlight all of this. Let's go to type change case. Let's make it uppercase. And then the sizing is all way, way off. Let's, let's make it more better. Okay, now I need to make some guides here. Um, I've got this clearly on the baseline. I just said baseline and it made me think of the music we're listening to. All right, um, <laughs> let's see. Let's draw another circle, holding down the shift key to make it perfect. Let's change the color so I can just kind of see that it's not part of the other artwork. Shift click. Center it up, shift X to swap from my fill to my stroke. I can see that if I hold over this, that's the shortcut there. Okay, scale it up. And all I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to create some guides for myself to see the top end of this thing. Wow, that does not look, look at, okay, look how far off I was at. That doesn't make sense. Something is really not straight here. So this arc. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Did I just skew that on accident and not even notice? Let's try that again. Okay, that looks better. So that would be the bottom. Copy it, Command F to paste it in place. Let's scale it out. Okay, that's I must have accidentally skewed it when I was trying to scale this. Okay, so now I'm just trying to see if I'm in the ballpark here for the size. Now, anytime you're reversing out text, you gotta be careful. Um, because the ink will tend to bleed in on itself. So I might make this text, instead of it being light, I might make it a little bit thicker. I could rotate my canvas so I could just turn my head sideways to see if it looks good. Uh, okay, that's close, that's close. I feel like it needs like, I don't know, something, something else. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down a guide for my ruler. If you don't see the rulers here, command R or control R if you're on a PC, we'll just show it or hide it. We'll go to view, 
um, down to somewhere where it says ruler. I don't remember. There it is. View rulers show or hide. There we go. Okay. So with the ruler selected, I can, I can click right in that ruler area and drag down a guide just to make sure I want to make sure that it's, it's balanced on both sides. Okay. Otherwise let's say I clicked on this and it was, like that, right? And not where it goes past here versus here. I just want to make sure that's that's pretty much straight. Same thing on this guy. Let's make sure it kind of falls at the same spot. Looks good. I dig it. All right, don't forget to save. I haven't saved this whole time. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and delete our guides. And then we'll delete. Let's make sure we're where we want to be on those. Those look close enough. We'll delete these other guides. All right, I'm I'm happy with that. I don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know if they're going to fix it, if it's just for their reference, or if I need to move stuff. About to find out though. All right. <clears throat> the other thing I could do. Oh gosh. Darn it. Okay. Darn it. Who says darn it? I do. All right. Um, I I realized if this is on somebody's backpack, like it doesn't do us any good that this is upside down. We should we should flip it. I gotta figure that out. So let's this might take me a minute. I don't remember. I think I can I right click on it? No. Can I type tool? Type on path tool. I'm gonna hit the return key. There we go. Okay, so most tools in Illustrator, for example, the scale tool, if I hit the letter S and then I hit the return key, it'll pop open the options for the scale tool. So a lot of times they'll turn on or off the scale. So that way when I scale strokes, it doesn't make them too big or too small. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna go to my type tool. I'm gonna go down to my type on path tool and then I'm gonna hit the return key on my keyboard. There we go. Align path to baseline. I can flip it, click on preview. And now instead of aligning to the baseline, I'm gonna align it to the ascender, which will be the top. That's so much better. Okay, we're so close. Uh, descender, center, baseline, ascender. Okay, uh, super close, close enough. Now what I need to do is maybe just scale it down. All right, that's better. So much better. Okay, now I can delete these guides. Save it. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Okay, so I'm just gonna save it. So when it comes time to upload this file, I don't know if I can, how far I can make it. Um, hold that thought for two seconds. I'm just gonna go to my main camera <clears throat> while I test this. I know you guys can't see it, but it's because I got top secret stuff. All right, if I wanted to order this, what is this? This is a button. loading <clears throat> cool all right here's where we're at let's let's show you what we're doing here so I'm gonna click up here on buttons at stickermule.com this is a one inch round button I'm gonna click on it and you just choose how many buttons you want to print so you can see that if you just want to do a few of them and not spend a lot of money, you can do 10 for only $18. But as soon as you start doubling your order, you start saving a lot more money. So, um, gosh, I'm trying to decide if I want to do a bunch. Maybe a hundred of them. I'll 
I'll click continue. And then all I have to do is choose the artwork that we just made. So, or I can use a previous design. These are previous stickers that I did today. Super cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna choose a file. We're gonna go to those stickers we just did. No, these aren't stickers. These are buttons. Go to buttons. And let's do the one that has the tagline. We'll click on that. And I'm uploading the Illustrator file. I didn't even export this as a JPEG or anything. So that's one thing I love about working with Sticker Mule. I just make the file real quick and then throw it up there. Throw it up there. If you have any instructions, you let them know. Click continue. Okay. And then I'm going to move to a new window because I feel like it's going to pull up my credit card information or something dumb like that while I'm live streaming. Uh... Okay, it didn't. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you can you can see what's in your cart. You can choose your quantity and adjust it if you need to, and then check out. Now, I highly recommend if you're working with Sticker Mule, instead of just checking out right here, go back to continue shopping, okay? And then add something else to the cart, because as soon as you do, you're gonna get a multiple item discount, and you might even get some, what do they call it? Some hot sauce for free. Super cool. All right, so let's keep making stuff. Let's keep making stuff. What do we want to make next? I think since the stream says we're making stickers and I've only made a button so far, I should probably make a sticker. Although I just made a bunch of stickers. Let's do a die cut sticker. Let's play with that a little bit. All right, so there's our sizes, uh, basic sizes, or we can do a custom size. Um, five by five. I'm trying to think how big I want to make this sticker. Let's do something for this here. I love this brand so much. Um, I kind of feel like for the sake of teaching you guys how to do the die cut, we're going to do, we're just going to straight up do this as a sticker as a first pass. Um, I don't want to do it in red. Let's do it in red. Um, all right, let's go ahead and grab a template. So we're back under we went to stickers, we're down under die cut stickers. And I'm going to scroll down. Actually, it doesn't matter which page you come to on this in the, in the footer, they've got their templates. Let's click on that. And then this is a sticker, it's a die cut sticker. We'll just download all sizes and see what happens. Went into my download stack right behind my head. There we go. Let's open that up. All right, similar deal. If you wanted to work in Photoshop, they've got a Photoshop file you could build in, which could be cool. I have some ideas for that, maybe another time. I'm gonna open the Illustrator file, click continue. All right, <clears throat> so let's see. So this is an example of their die cut sticker template. So very, very similar. If we come over to our layers here, we're in Illustrator. It's gonna be the same way in Photoshop or, or very, very similar. We have the instructions. So if I turn that layer off, you can see all of the instructions go away, okay? We have our cut line, which is literally where the sticker will be cut. So you want your artwork to go past the cut line by an eighth of an inch, and they tell you that down here. Okay, they give you very, very clear instructions. So your design has a bleed, that's what a bleed is. It bleeds past the edge, past the cut line by one eighth of an inch, okay? That way, if the machine moves even just a tiny bit, the ink will still go all the way to the edge without there being like a sliver of white where maybe it shifted a little bit in production, okay? All right, <clears throat> so let's, uh, but how do you get that awesome one eighth inch cut line and bleed. How do you do that? Well, let's let's figure that out real quick. So I'm going to take, let's see, let's go back over here. Let's grab, I think, I think I want to do this one. I'm going to shift click the background and just bring it all with me. I'm going to paste it in here. It might be huge. Oh, it's about the right size. Scale it down, stick it over here. Actually, 
I'm going to use this red as a, okay, hang with me for a second as I do some things. I'm, I'm going to click this bowl, shift click over here on the mule, click again, because I want this to just be centered to their template. It doesn't matter at all. They're going to grab it. It doesn't matter, but I don't know. I get all picky about it. Also, let's go to file, save as, save our work. And let's find the new song to listen to. All right. Uh, third bowl. This is going to be a sticker. So new folder. Stickers. I call it T3B. Die cut sticker. Red. Okay. Now this music is just stressing me out. I feel like I'm being chased. Chase scene. Okay. So the next thing I want to look at, if I come back over here to stickers, die cut stickers, and you want to see pricing. So, well, two things. I, I usually, I almost always have a ruler next to me, and this is the one time I don't really. I mean, I hold on. So check this out. I carry with me this fancy little pen pouch. And it's got my favorite pens in here, my favorite pencils, and I take it with me everywhere. So that way I always know I've got my, my fresh lead for my fancy pencils and my fancy little metal ruler because I'm a nerd like that. All right. So let's see. is going to focus. I don't know, but I can see how big five inches is right in front of me. Like I can see, you know, if I want to do a one inch sticker or in this case, the smallest is a two inch. It's pretty small. Uh, gosh, I probably want this to be at least, let's see what the design looks like. That text, if that was a four inch width text. I wish you could see me holding this up to the screen. I'm literally holding my ruler up to the screen to kind of get an idea of what of how big that is. Uh, so I'm trying to think about where the sticker is going to actually be placed. Also, is it going to be on the back of your laptop? Is it going to sit on your desk? Is it going to be put on, I don't know, a vehicle, lots of ways to use your stickers. So, uh, I'm trying to balance making it big enough with also making it not cost a million dollars because some of these stickers clearly cost almost a million dollars. Um, <laughs> try chill down tempo. Thanks, Uriel over on uh, Behance. So what I'm listening to right now actually is a Harris Heller stream. It's a, it's a, is it stream beats? I forget. Anyway, when you're streaming live, I can't use like the cool music that I usually listen to because of rights managed music stuff. Okay, so let's find something different. Just two seconds here. Electronic stream beats, lo-fi. This is gonna soften it up a little bit. That's more better. Ooh, there's a Christmas version. A little bit early for that, considering it was 100 degrees today. Some synth wave. What's that sound like? Mm, that stresses me out. All right, we'll do this. Thanks for the suggestion, Uriel, over on Behance. I appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> so what we're we doing, we're trying to figure out the, the size of our sticker. We're, it's going to end up being a custom size, but I'm just going to try and find the width to get me in the ballpark. Um, oh, that gets expensive fast. Not that it, okay, let's see. Um, four inches wide on that text should be good. Okay, we're just gonna go with four inches. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah, it's not that much more. Okay, four inches. So what I'm gonna do in Illustrator, I have the letter M to get my rectangle tool. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, I'm just gonna click once and it's gonna open up the options for rectangles. And I'm gonna type in four, 
and we'll just say four by four. Okay. And by default, mine shows up as inches. And the reason why is because if I go to illustrator down to preferences, if you're on a PC, it's under edit preferences. Um, and you want to go down to, um, units here. And currently I am working in, oh my gosh. Usually I'm in inches here. Why did that work? It might be from their template anyway. Uh, but if you change your, your uh, units that you're working with to inches here, when you go to do that kind of stuff, it'll default whether it's units or pixels or millimeters or centimeters, whatever you want to use, um, or just physically key it in. So if I click once and I were to say, Hey, I want this to be 100 pixels. I would just type PX and it converts it back to inches because this document is sent up for print in inches, but you get the point. Okay, I'm gonna cancel. And now I can see this is the size this has to be. Just quick visual, right? The other thing I could do is grab this and then with the move tool selected, is it, no, it's a selection tool in Illustrator. It's the move tool in Photoshop. The selection tool in Illustrator, up here on the top right of the options bar, I can see my artwork uh, the width is right now at 4.7 and change inches wide by 2.9 inches tall. And because this little lock icon is set here, I could physically change this to say, Hey, no, I want this to be exactly four inches. And when I click over here, it automatically scales the height too. And now if I come back over here, you can see that shape I drew earlier, that's four inches wide. You can see it scaled my sticker to be exactly four inches wide. Now I need to give room to have my, um, outline strokey thing that I'm going to put on here. You'll see it here in just a minute. Let's do that. Let's do that now. All right. <clears throat> so here's what I think I want to do. I'm going to get rid of this guy. If I get rid of, I'm going to move him over here. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's start creating an outer border thing for this. So I'm going to grab all of this artwork. Let's see, we're going to do it in two different phases. So let's ungroup this command shift G to ungroup more time. Okay. So now I've got my text. So let's start with the text. Uh, gosh, lots of ways to do this. We'll draw a shape. That's the exact size here. I'm going to throw it behind. I'm going to change the color just so I can see what I'm working with. It doesn't matter what I change it to. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to make this, I'm going to go to object path and then offset path. So it's going to offset the path beyond what the shape is currently. So I've got that rectangle selected and I want to offset this to be 1.25. That's an eighth of an inch. Okay. Click okay. So that's exactly an eighth inch past. And I'll show you why I did that in a minute. And it made it, it duplicated the shape. So if I move this, you can see the original is still there. So let's cut that. Let's delete this one and I'm gonna hit command B as in behind to paste that shape behind, but in the exact same place. Otherwise if I hit just command V, it's just going to throw it anywhere on the canvas, wherever it feels like it. So command B to paste it behind. Okay. And now let's make a stroke thing around the bowl as well. So we grab this shape, we go to object path, offset path. Same thing, 0.125 inches and the joints instead of uh, miter, meter, whatever, round, we want to round them off. By default, it's going to do that. But you see, it's got these little points here where the logo has some interesting things going on. We're just going to round it off. So now it's all nice and soft. We'll click OK. And I'm going to hit Command X before I do anything else to cut all that extra stuff it brought in. I'm going to click on this bowl. I'm going to hit Command 2 to lock it. Same as going to Object down to lock selection. So now I don't accidentally move this thing around. Did I accidentally move anything else? No, we're good. Okay. And then command B to paste that selection that I had behind. Everything's still selected. Let's go to window down to pathfinder. There it is. I'm just going to merge all those shapes together. Shift, shift M to get my shape builder tool. And we're just going to squiggle draw over those interior shapes as well, just to get it all as one shape. Okay. 
eyedropper tool. We're gonna select this color behind so it all matches. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in the gaps below here. Let's just draw a rectangle, it doesn't really matter. Lots of ways to do this. Shift click, merge. Now it's back in front. So we're just gonna go to object, arrange, send it back or shift command left bracket. All right, cool. That's looking pretty good. The TM even stays intact, which is nice. All right, so the next thing I wanna do, uh, let's see. I probably wanna round these corners because I want them to kind of match the rest of what's happening here. So let's grab this corners. Okay, so what I did there, just selected it, but I used the direct selection tool. So hit the letter A. So instead of this black arrow up here, the letter A to get the direct selection tool. When you do that, my options across the top changes, and now I've got the option for corners here. So I can change this to be a an eight inch rounded corner as well, which kind of fits nicely here, even though this is squared off. Uh, it's just it's just going to be a lot nicer to to um, work with versus having a really pointy edge on the sticker. All right. Now we are going to merge these two shapes. So click this shape, shift click this shape, go to my pathfinder and merge them together. OK, so this is going to be basically exactly what the sticker looks like when it's all done. <clears throat> However, let's change this text and the bowl. Oh, it's locked. Okay. Command option two, or come here to object, unlock all. There we go. Now I can select the bowl and the text. Get my eyedropper tool, click on the desktop or the white canvas area to make that white. And let's change this color back to red and my TM just got lost. So let's bring that back. Let's group that so it doesn't happen again. Kind of like the dark though. I don't know. They're both good. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is make two things. Okay, so the final sticker size, we want to be four inches wide, which I think we're beyond that now. So if I grab all this artwork, group it together. Yeah, so the width is 4.1. So let's just make this four inches exactly. Making sure my little lock, oh, wrong one. That was my Y, X, Y coordinate. Okay, so the width is 4.25 inches. Uh, let's make this exactly four inches wide. And with this lock selected, it's gonna change the height as well as soon as I hit tab or enter, or return. So the height is gonna be 2.5 and change. Oh yeah, that'll be a good size sticker. That'll be great. <clears throat> All right, URL synth wave is 80s electronic cyberpunk style. I love that so much. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, all right, so that's how our sticker is going to look. So now we got to make it ready, ready, ready to go. So what I'm going to do, go to my layers. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? I'm going to grab this outer shape we made. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to lock the artwork layer. I'm going to go to my cut line layer and hit command F, which pastes it in the exact same spot. With my eyedropper tool, I'm going to sample the same blue stroke line that they have over here. So now I've got the exact same color on the cut line. Okay. Now I need to make my artwork go past that by, they said an eighth of an inch, right? Yeah. Eighth inch past the cut line. All right. So let's grab this guy here, this background shape, which is currently locked. So let's unlock that. Let's lock our cut line. Now we've got this shape and you can see where the cut line is. Okay. So with this shape selected, let's go to object path, offset path and X offset it by 0.125 inches, eighth of an inch. All right. Okay. Now, it duplicated that shape on top of the other shape. So I could probably leave it. Probably leave it. That way I have the other one behind it to come back to, but just to be aware, it does that. All right, <clears throat> we've got our cut line. That's pretty dope. I'm, I'm digging this. I could probably color it 
more, do something with it, or shade in the bowl a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. What do I want to do? Let's try something. Bring the bowl over, bring it in front of this shape, shift click. So now they're both selected. And then we're going to come over here to Pathfinder. I don't remember which one it is. I think it's divide. Click on that. Now get my direct selection tool, click right on this shape and delete it. Yes. And everything in the middle stayed. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. All right. Did the whole thing stay? No, it's in pieces though. That's what I wanted but I can work better. Let's make this a different crazy color so I can easily select it later. All right, grab all that, divide it, direct selection tool, delete the outside, move this over so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, now these are all different pieces, but I want them to be unified. Let's cut this, whoops. All right, direct selection tool, I'm gonna select this blue. I'm gonna come up here to select, same, fill in stroke, and it should grab anything that that same blue, which it'll only be in that one instance. So it's not grabbing something else on accident. And then let's merge them all together, which should ungroup it. There we go. Oh, that actually is cool too. All right. So I've got the blue, I've got the white. I'm gonna grab this, let's group it. Shift click on this bowl over here, let go, click. Actually, let's change the color of this one so I don't get confused to something else. Wow, that is a difficult color to see, but that's all right. Grab that. Cut it, grab that, delete it. Command F to paste back on top. Now let's, that's actually kind of cool, but that's not the right color. So let's, select same fill and stroke. Let's make it the same red, but then let's make it That's pretty cool. I like it. This whole time I have not saved yet. Whoops. Save your work. All right. Now we've got a sticker that is ready to go. That's it. Except for, okay, let's get rid of this garbage. I only kept this over here so I could reference this little stroke line. Let's delete that. My stroke line is, my cut line is locked. Unlock it. Now we can delete that. We don't need this. Let's delete that. Looks good. I love it. Oh, guys, I forgot to show you this. Squirrel, sorry. Um, so I actually, I gotta cover the information because you wouldn't like that I showed this with this cell phone number on it. I'm gonna do it though. So these are business cards. They're super crazy thick. And the camera's probably not going to pick it up, but there's a red line. How close can I get? Yeah, it's not going to work. There's a red line of paper in the middle of this thing. And then here's the back. And I designed this live. So if you want to watch the replay, it's still up. In fact, it might be the last one that I did because it's been like three weeks ago or four weeks ago since I went live. So this is part of the brand. Super cool business card. I love this thing. Um, and I don't know why I'm still holding it up in front of the camera because <laughs> it's getting late. It's time for me to sign off. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so here's the sticker for that same brand. And now that I see this, that, that color, even though it's cool, it doesn't match. That's all right. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of redoing all this work, I'm just going to save it. This is a red version. We've got it good to go. Let's go to file, save as, and let's call this one oh man, red. and black or something. I don't know. I don't know what this is gonna turn into, but I think I'm gonna use black. We'll grab this color. I'm gonna select 
Same fill and stroke. Let's make this black. We're, we're still defining the brand, so I don't really know if that's gonna be how we want it to be or not. That's pretty powerful looking. Let's, let's save that. And then, oh, let's just drag this over here for a second. And let's flip these colors. And go to my libraries. Let's go back to the third ball. Let's make the bowl red. No correlation to red bowl. I hope. Sixty, forty, forty, and one hundred for that rich black. Select this, let's sample that. That's pretty cool. That's really sharp. I like that. I like that probably better than this. Um, but what we're gonna do, shoot, I should have saved another version so I had options. Guys, which way is better? Bowl in red or the bowl in black? Let me know. <coughs> oh no, it's out of water. Oh, I did this logo too. Fun stuff, fun stuff. All right. <clears throat> Tell you what, here's how I solve this problem. I take a quick screenshot of this. So command, shift, and the number four on my keyboard, click and drag. And then before I let go, I hold down the control key, which will then save it to my clipboard. Then I have to turn off my screen because I'm gonna jump over to my, my team here in the chat. I'm gonna jump over into messages. And I'm gonna say, Red Bull or Black Bull. And then I'm gonna send them the image. And this does two things. It's almost midnight, and then they know that I'm working at midnight. But then they can also tell me which one they like better. Cool. All right, I bet, I would bet money, if I know my team, that they're gonna say this one. But just in case, we're just going to stash this off to the side. So before I send this to, um, yep, Sticker Mule, I'm going to delete this off the artboard here. So let's save this. And then for the sake of the exercise, let's jump back over into my, let's see, this is four inches wide. Actually, it's custom. So this was four inches wide. We'll call it, what was it height wise? This was like two inches, 2.57 inches tall. We'll call it 2.6, 2.6. I don't even know if they'll let me do that. Let's see what happens. So if I do the custom size, it says it's 75 bucks for 50. If I do four by four, it says it's, oh, it's a little cheaper that way. All right, we're doing custom size then. So we're gonna do four inches, and what did I say, 2 .7, 2 2.7, 2.57, 2.5719. I don't know how precise they're going to. Okay, two decimal places. 2.57. We'll see what happens. Continue. Lada says, I like the black background. Red Bolt, same. Thank you. Um, all right, let's upload that file. Let's go find this thing. Third bowl, stickers. That's not the right, there we go. Upload, continue, and now what's gonna happen, here's the magic. Um, it's not really that magical, but they will give you a discount. Look at that, I just saved 20 bucks because I've got two stickers and 
oh man, I'm only four bucks away. If I spend four more dollars, I get to add a free bottle of mule sauce, which is like hot sauce or sriracha or something. I don't really know. Anyway, super cool stuff. So then when that's all said and done, I'd click the big checkout button. What would happen is it would immediately go and get the files prepped and then they're gonna send you uh, a text message and or an email and you can view the proofs and make sure that everything looks like you expect it to. And then when you're ready, you just say, yep, print it. And that's it. That's how you make stickers in Sticker Mule. Super fun stuff. I hope you guys learned a lot. I was really tripped out. I think the music had a cell phone ringing and I thought it was my wife off to the side calling somebody. Um, anyway, that's, I think that's everything for tonight. I hope you guys learned a lot. I learned a lot. And I got some work done at the same time. It was super productive. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm I'm uh, forgetting what I was going to say. It's time for bed. It is almost midnight where I'm at. Um, and uh, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I've got a bunch of links down below, uh, some free tutorials, some courses, ways for you to like and subscribe to the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, Lada, thanks for being engaged over on YouTube. I appreciate that. Everybody over on Behance, Uriel, Selva, uh, all kinds of tricks and tech, all kinds of people over there. Thank you so much for hanging with me on this late night stream. And I can't wait to see you on the next one. I'll catch you guys later. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I want to remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can and uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your facebook page i'd really appreciate that uh, but again just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and i'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out so the best way that i can help you is by you commenting on the videos below i read those comments i engage with them as soon as i can if i can when i see them so if it's live i'll try and answer you right away if this is a replay you can still comment on the video Video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.